Dark Angels. They're the, the green ones with the robes, right? For me, Warhammer was not much more than an introduction to the miniature painting hobby. I found myself very quickly falling down the Dungeons and Dragons rabbit hole, so never really got to experience much of the world building or the deeper parts of the Warhammer hobby. But today I want to change that, even if it is only a little bit, to pay my respects to the franchise that got me into miniature painting, in a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time. A series of dioramas showcasing the legions of Warhammer. Starting today with the Dark Angels, the first legion. I've always wanted to paint up one of each marine, just to have it on my shelf. One of each of the 20 legions. But I didn't just want to slap them on a base and let them blend into my shelf. So today, we're going to be doing one of my first dioramas. This will allow me to showcase some of the interesting world building and lore that I discovered while researching for this project. I began by researching some of the interesting lore surrounding the Dark Angels, watching various YouTube commentary videos, diving into a few wiki pages. I always knew that the Dark Angels wore robes, which was something that visually set them apart, but I didn't ever understand why. I discovered that this is because of their monastic past, as a group of knights on their homeworld of Caliban. Caliban was the homeworld for the Dark Angels, their point of origin, if you will. I do believe that Caliban has been destroyed for all intents and purposes, left to ruin, and now overrun by almost fantasy-like creatures that roam its wilds. But one of the most interesting things about the Dark Angels are the Fallen, a small group of the Dark Angels that fell to heresy in their leader's absence, conspiring against them, and trying to force out their leader and his army when they got back from a galactic war. And since then the Dark Angels have vowed to eliminate all Fallen, to hide this dark secret of their legion. And this culmination of storytelling and world building surrounding the Dark Angels is what's going to inspire my diorama today. Our diorama is going to be set in the remnant overgrown ruins of Caliban, where a squad of Dark Angels believes members of the Fallen to be hiding. Specifically, our diorama is going to highlight one of these Dark Angels, who has just taken down one of the Fallen and is now helping his squad look for any remaining threats. The diorama will sport a dirt-covered ancient stone ruin that has entirely fallen to rubble, with our Dark Angels intercessor standing atop, a recently dispatched member of the Fallen. I started this by building most of a base intercessor, but I knew I was going to want to do some converting and kit bashing on this model, to change up the pose to better align with the visual I wanted to create. I pushed his torso to be lent a little further back with his right hip raised. This would help sell the idea that his right leg will be propped up on a dead body, which has been created from a bunch of extra bits I had lying around from some other kits. I then cut his right leg cleanly through the joint, to remove some extra material before gluing it back together at a sharper angle, constantly checking it against my scene to make sure the pose was correct. For his arms, I weighed up a few options. I started out thinking that I wanted to have him still pointing a pistol at the Fallen's head, but eventually settled on this iconic arm from the Intercessor kit, where it looks like our Dark Angel has had to shoulder his main rifle in favour of his pistol in the final moments of their fight. And because he now had two guns, I didn't want to put another one in his offhand, so I instead settled on the small wrist-mounted display for his left arm, as if he's now scanning for any other Fallen or threatening life forms in the area. For his head, I did decide to go with a regular Intercessor helmet. I wanted the majority of this marine to come from the Assault Intercessor sprue, as I wanted to be able to have a similar feel across each diorama in the future, and I didn't want to lose the detail of helmet colour by using a bare face. Though I did chop the back of this helmet off and cut away the sides. This was to account for the fact that I would be sculpting one of the iconic Dark Angel's hoods onto this marine later, and removing these parts would allow me to make the sculpted layer a little bit thicker and give me some more wiggle room later. I do believe that I learned that the robes are usually reserved for higher ranking members of the Dark Angels, but I wanted to capture their iconic look, so we're just going to say that this guy is working his way through the ranks, even if the model and the iconography maybe isn't perfectly lore accurate in that sense. With the base body put together, I got to work sculpting the cloth. And again, this is something else that I'm pretty new at. I've done a little bit of Milliput work in the past, but often got poor results. But today I ended up being really, really happy with how these robes turned out. I filled in the waist area of his torso with a blob of milliput and got to sculpting in some details, adding creases and folds. 
Then I flattened out my remaining milliput and let it set for about 30 minutes, just so that it had a little bit of time to firm up, before I cut out a small section and laid it across his groin. Pushing and pulling the material to create folds and make the loincloth appear as if it is actually conforming to the surfaces of this marine's armour. And I sculpted in some ridges and valleys to help sell that cloth look. I then cut out another piece of my slightly cured but still workable milliput and attached it with a drop of superglue to the head, where I then began pushing the material around, trying to keep an even thickness near the hood's opening and sculpting in some believable folds falling over the marine's helmet. Overall I'm super happy with how these sculpted areas came out. With his robes in place, I could add a few nice finishing touches to his design. A few extra pouches and some additional holsters. I know the Dark Angels are one of the only chapters that have access to large amounts of plasma weapons and swords, and even though I didn't have one to spare for this model, I wanted to make it appear like perhaps he has room for one on his front. An additional holster for a plasma sidearm. Maybe he just dropped it in the scuffle. For the diorama base itself, I grabbed some foam core leaving the paper exterior on and cut this into planks that I then used to form the walls, carving off sections, rounding the edges and gluing it together in a way that I could create the look of an old ruin that's been absolutely lost to time. I cut some tile pattern into the elevated floor and pushed down on those cuts to create obvious separation between the tiles. And even though very little of this floor will actually be seen, these details will help make this place feel like it was once lived in. From there I added some cork to create the main mounds of dirt and debris that have built up on the floor and in the corners, and also to create the mound that our marine's other foot will be planted on. I used some milliput to fill in the gaps and create some additional ground or texture where it was needed. Then I cut up some leftover pieces of another miniature, a stone elemental, to use as a basing rock and again used a milliput to blend that into the plinth and the floor. From there it was a matter of positioning our fallen. I used a mound of milliput to try and hold all of these pieces together, and to try and create a believable mound of dead space marine. I continued using the milliput to bulk out his form, to try and make it look like this was a full space marine that died here and has just been completely covered by the rubble and ruin around him. I didn't have any spare legs lying around either, but I figured that they likely wouldn't be missed. So I just sculpted on a similar robe across our marine, making sure that it too looked like it had just slumped across the ruins. And eventually I covered up where his feet should be with an additional floor tile or a piece of wall that had fallen in during the battle. After adding some other little bits to the base, I came in and gave this whole thing, excluding the fallen, a coat of poor man's Mod Podge. A thinned down layer of PVA glue. This was just to help strengthen up the entire diorama and to make any of the like soft foam details a little more rigid and easier to paint later on. With that initial coat dry, I came in with a much thicker layer of PVA, in all of the areas that needed some coarse dirt basing material, such as around the edges of the plinth and blending the rocks into the ground, as well as all over the collapsed building where this dirt is piling up against the walls, leaving just enough of that tile pattern behind to give some idea that this was what's a building. And now that everything's all done, all dried, cured, and set, I think it's time to prime. I used a simple airbrush of some Army Painter Matte Grey Primer, with a few drops of added black for colour, as well as a drop or two of gloss varnish for a stronger coat. Not sure if this actually helps, but I like to think it does. Besides, I prefer painting on a satin finish rather than the often chalky texture that Matte Primer leaves behind. I then base coated our Dark Angel, also using the airbrush, just for a quick and smooth first layer. An initial coat of Army Painter's Angel Green, followed by an additional airbrush of some thinned Orc Green speed paint mixed with Grim Black speed paint, just to help both darken this base coat and also add some much needed saturation to the pure Angel Green. Then it was a matter of base coating the robes, a step that I ended up repeating a couple of times. My initial attempt at the robes was a base coat of Ancient Stone, followed by a slightly thinned soft tone wash, but this ended up looking… bad. While I thought about how to fix that, I decided I was going to move on to base coating the Aquila on the chest with the same off-white, 
and then dotted in all of the blacks on the marine's belts, the joints, and his straps, before coming back to the robes for another try. I reapplied the base coat, and it actually seems that the wash layer underneath seemed to help smooth out the last few imperfections, so I guess there was a nice little bonus to screwing it up the first time. This time, however, I came in with a much more subtle shade, using two drops of Pallid Bone Speed Paint mixed with four drops of Speed Paint Medium, to create a very weak yellow tinted speed paint that I carefully used almost like a glaze all over the robes. And this worked awesome. It gave a nice recessed shade and a slightly worn look without being overly contrasty like the last attempt. I will come back in and add some highlights later but this looks much better already and makes the cloth actually feel soft. Now we tackle the armor. I wanted to start with a green skin edge highlight, taking inspiration from the classic heavy metal space marines that we always see on the box art. A style that does a wonderful job of showing off all of the details of a model. But I do change this up a little bit, using an almost non-metallic metal approach on some of the most prominent armor pieces. I don't want to push this enough to make it look metallic, but just enough to give the sense that there is reflectiveness to the armor, as if the screen has been painted over a shiny surface. To do this I hatched in some rough areas where the color would be brighter, and these areas will gradually get smaller as we move through our highlights. For my next jump in brightness, I move up to a 50-50 green skin and rainforest green mix, picking out almost all of those edges again but decreasing the size of the highlight, leaving some of the previous layer behind to create a bit of a blend. And again, this is going to connect those reflective areas, using a much smaller area than before. For our next highlight, I mixed in a little bit more rainforest green, but I only picked out some parts of the edges that we've been highlighting. The areas that would either be directly highlighted by the light source, or any areas that really stand proud from their surrounding details. And when it comes to those reflective areas we've been adding in, this mix didn't always connect in the middle. This helps to give the impression that the areas closer to the edges are picking up and reflecting a little bit more light. And now I want to push the highlights just a little bit too far, using pure rainforest green on our brightest edges and dotting it in on the corners of highlighted details. I wanted to push the highlights a little bit further than I wanted the final finish to end up being as I intended to come back over all of the armor with a glaze of our base angel green color to help unify these various greens and pull all of the tones a little bit closer together. By highlighting in this way, knowing that I'm going to come in and darken it all down a little bit later, I'm able to make big jumps in brightness with each highlight, and then pull them back down at the end to make those stark differences a little bit smoother of a blend using this glaze. Onto the details. I used a dark brown on all of the holsters and pouches, before coming in with a brown wash. This will then get highlighted later on with some scratchy hatching of lighter browns to make this look like worn and well used leather. For the guns, a base coat of Mephiston red mixed with some black went all over this Dark Angel's iconic red weaponry, which then got highlighted up with some pure Mephiston red to add some variation and depth. And while the red was on my palette, I made sure to dot in the lenses of our marine, followed up by a highlight of a bright orange. I then also painted in the black details of these weapons, such as the mags and the grips, as well as some metallics on the more exposed areas of unpainted steel. Similarly, while the metallics were out, I picked out just the rims of the little spherical jets on the power pack, as well as the exhaust vents. A quick edge highlight of dark grey went on all of the black details of both the guns and the various belts, straps, and joints that we painted earlier. And before moving on to the base, I added in some of the more common Dark Angel's heraldry on his knee pad. I opted not to freehand the various Dark Angel symbols on his shoulder pads because I was a little short on time and would actually really like to get my hands on a proper decal transfer to add to this model later down the road. Now for the base, a much quicker and dirtier paint job that ended up looking fantastic. When it came to the base here I didn't want to spend an additional 8 hours and bring it to the same level of polish as our Dark Angel. Instead I want the base to be a strong supporting element to the model we've already painted to help bring it to life and to allow the marine to stand out. I started by using some of that leftover angel green on the fallen, as well as glazing it onto a few areas of the base. I then came in with a simple grey dry brush over the whole diorama. I wanted this fallen to share the same base coat green as our dark angel himself, but I wanted the fallen to feel darker and more muted, to help sell his look as heretical. But I also wanted to have some degree of separation between the dark angel and his fallen counterpart, 
So to this point, I looked at some concept art and other paint jobs of the Fallen, and decided to make his cloak black. With the dry brush done, I thinned down a brown speed paint, which was added to all of the dirt and soil areas, making sure to have some natural variation, having some areas be thinner or thicker coats of this paint than others. I then used some of our ancient stone mixed with grey, to get a clay stone look, and started adding this quite thinned down to the stonework of our base, working through a few layers at different opacities, glazing it on and pushing it around in some areas, then edge highlighting and stippling it on in others. This gave a nice natural look of worn stone pretty quickly, especially with some of that green and brown standing through from underneath. Some brighter browns got dry brushed onto the dirt, and a quick thin wash was added to the tiles and the stonework before I turned my attention back to the Fallen. Starting with an all over dark wash to add some quick recess shading and darken him down, he then got a quick edge highlight of some of that same green skin from earlier, but this would be his brightest highlight rather than a mid-tone. Similar to his black cloak, I took inspiration from some concept art and other paint jobs I'd seen and decided to go with a red metallic Aquila. I'm not sure if a Fallen should even have an Aquila on his chest, but I didn't really feel like sanding it down just to sculpt something else on. So this got a base coat of bright silver along with some of the other areas of the marine, such as the tubes around his face and even some battle damage on his armor. Then over top of that metallic, the Aquila got a coat of blood red speed paint, which gave a brilliant red metallic look. Next, I used some of our leftover greens and yellows, thinned them down and glazed them into the dirt. Then I came in and wet blended a quick highlight on our Fallen's loincloth, followed by a generous amount of Army Painter's True Blood, which I put all over the exposed neck of our Fallen, and similarly on the ground around it, where this heretic met his end. And just like that, after many hours of work, my first Space Marine diorama of the Dark Angels, the First Legion, is complete. Man, I'm super happy with this. I've been sick the last few days and having a fun project like this to keep motivation high and help me push through has been awesome. I'm super glad that I finally started this project. I've been wanting to paint up the legions for a long time and didn't really know what format to do it in, but having a diorama of each sitting on my shelf is eventually gonna look really cool. It was, as I expected, a lot of work, but man, the payoff was so worth it and I already can't wait to get started on the next one. But I wanna know what you think. Should I continue working through the legions in order, or is there a specific marine that you would really like to see next? What's your favourite little bit of lore about the Dark Angels, or what was the biggest thing I got wrong or missed, because believe me I'm sure there's plenty. Let me know all your answers in the comments below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe to let both me and YouTube know that you want to see more of this series in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.